It's a little windy outside, so I apologize for the uh, the wind noise already. But this is a 1980 C3 Corvette that I just picked up last weekend. When I got it, it wouldn't actually start, so I've never been able to hear it run. I didn't be able to test drive it, test out the brakes, or anything like that. One of the biggest problems besides that, obviously, is that the car has crazy bad clear coat issues. So I think it was painted back in the 80s, and this clear coat just didn't agree with the paint at all. So it's just like that all over the entire car. You know, from 10 feet away, it looks really good, but when you get close, you're just like, ugh. It actually makes it look dirty. But what I want to do today is try to drive it off my trailer instead of rolling it off my trailer. And when we were checking it out, we realized that the the engine wasn't getting spark so I'm gonna start where you're supposed to st start with the distributor I know the distributor gets power but there's nothing happening after that so let's pop the hood let's see oh you might want to see the inside too so it's actually not too bad inside to tell you the truth I mean it's gonna be carpet very very badly but other than that it, a lot of it will clean up I mean there's a few little rub marks and stuff like that but to be expected with an original interior chopstick and noodle love it you guys want to go up in there you want to go up in there Nudo, don't go up in there, Nudo. Jump, jump, jump. She loves to get in the car and look at her. It's all the good smells. Maybe not that one. I don't know. It's a bad sign. So here we are underneath the hood. Um, the first thing you'll probably notice is that this is a non-original motor. Since we have center bolt valve covers, that means the motor's been swapped to a newer style small block Chevy. But that's okay because what came in 1980 probably wasn't that great anyway so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mess around with uh, the distributor and what I'm gonna first do is probably label all the spark plug wires and then put a new cap and uh, coil on it and see if it'll run that way and if not then we'll dig a little bit deeper in the distributor and hopefully um, it's something simple So it has this monster Holly double pumper on it, which I feel like's a little big, but what can you do, right? I might swap it out. We'll just see how it runs, if I can get it to run. All right, so I haven't pulled this cap off yet, but if you see that, that's a sign of moisture. So you guys ready? That's not too bad. I've seen worse. Let's see. Yeah, it looks fairly good, decent. Um, I'm gonna say that it is probably either the coil or this ignition module right here. Could be either of them. Uh, let's throw on a different coil and see if it gets sparked that way. I kind of want to open up this and look inside it first. In taking the uh, lids off uh, these caps, I really don't see much difference between one and the other. I mean, both are going to be worn, etc, etc. Um, a lot of times these fail and you can't really tell why. So what we'll do is we'll throw this one on and we'll see if that makes a difference. If it doesn't, then I'm pretty sure it's going to be this ignition model. This this ignition module says GM on it, so that can tell you how old it really is. So let's get it off and see if it makes a difference. All right, new cap is on. Uh, supposedly this shows a half a tank of gas, so uh, we'll see what happens. So did you guys hear it kind of sputtered at the beginning? That tells me it's got spark. All right, gonna add some gas just to see if it will fire. All I want it here is to run for a couple seconds and that's all I need. There it is. So it looks like we might have a bad fuel pump. 
as well as the issue with the spark. But that sounds pretty healthy and it doesn't run correctly because the carburetor is not running the engine. But Alright, before we go changing fuel pumps, we have to see if there's actually fuel that it could or could not be pumping. Uh, the best way I could tell on these these later 75 and up gas tanks, since they have a small little neck, basically you just need something to stick down in there and see if there's any gas. So, um, we've got to remember that they do curve, they slope downwards in the bottom. So if you go in straight, you won't hit the bottom, you kind of have to go in at an angle. Um, I usually use a dowel rod for this, but I don't know where mine went, so pretty easy. I have this, this antenna mast, <laughs> so if we go, push the little flapper and we go all the way to the bottom, so that's the bottom, and we pull it all the way back up, we can look at it, I mean I got one little drop, but that's it, I mean none of the rest of this is wet at all, so there's no gas in it whatsoever, so before we change the fuel pump and rule that out as not pumping, let's give it some gas to pump and see what it will do. Good. All right, so I tightened that up. It stopped leaking. Hopefully, we don't have a. We might have another leak here on this other side. Mm, yeah, looks like we have an accelerator pump leak right here. No knocks. No issues so far. It's fuel pumps working. All right, we got. Tactic works, oil pressure works, temp supposedly works. So let's and no headlights. That's okay. All right, there you go, guys. It runs. So what I'm gonna do now is get it off the trailer. But it definitely needs a tune-up. It could probably use a carb rebuild, etc., etc., etc. I think this carburetor is way too big for this engine, but that's just my opinion. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get it unloaded.
Look at this dog. He's got spit on his eyeball. What'd you do? Did you put that on there yourself? Did you do that? Did you do that? Did you do that? Get the new dog. He's really excited about his new look. And then there's new dog. New dog, get excited. That's all she got. She doesn't jump. <laughs>